Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakah HaKwadash. Double honors to that apostles of the great no stone, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Brakatham, to the 144,000, and as well as the one third overall, which is the elect, which is under His grace, and it's your brother Laban. Coming at you with another video, and this is just going to be a brief video on the book of Haggai, which the book of Haggai was um, written for the most part, as um, scholars will tell it, for the most part, which was around, what is it, 520 B.C. And um, what I want to begin by reading is the book of Haggai 2, in verse 6, where it reads, This, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. So from the time when this was said, it would have been around that time. So now you got to what do the calculation of the time period, which what which that was, which we're probably looking at um two, a little under 2,500 years ago, a little over that. And now we're basically in the end. And the proof of that is... When we read the book of, um, what is it, Matthew 24. And I just want to read the parable of the fig tree first. And then we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of this topic. So this reads in verse, um, Matthew 24, verse 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree when its branches yet tender and put it forth leaves. You know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. Just as it is mentioned in the book of Ezra, the life chapter, where it mentions how the Lord has, um, you know, the endings and the effects. And is elaborated a little bit on the proof of how the Lord is coming back. As it is written that the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And prior before then we would what see these tokens. And these tokens are also written in the book of Matthew 24 included. Where the disciples were inquiring. When was going to be the time of the end of the world. And as well as his return. So Yahweh Shah broke it down to them. And, and told them that when you see nations rising up against nations. And kingdoms against kingdoms and hearing wars and rumors of wars. And as well as as it is mentioned in the book of Luke. That I also want to read as well in the book of what is it 21. And verse. 27 I believe. Twenty five it is. And as this reads, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity and the seas and the waves roaring. And we are definitely living in these times. I mean, all around the world, every, every so often, people get together and they protest at an alarming scale. Sometimes there's riots out of these protestings that go on and then you have these um, um, ongoing tornadoes, earthquakes, and then we're getting in the future a blue moon and as well as we're also getting these red moons too. Okay? So all of these things Yahweh Shai told the disciples of, of his return. And we're in that time. We're in the exact time of these things basically being seen on a global scale. So what does that tell you? That the little while is up and um, we're in that time of the Lord's second return. Okay. When you read the scripture and as well as you read Matthew 24, you can't help but apply it to now. It's very clear. So what does that tell you? Which is the most important part of this, this, um, this topic that I'm getting into is that the Lord is going to begin to visit the earth, which he made and all of the powers which are right now will be shaken. Okay. Men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. 
For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, which goes right along with what I just read in the book of Haggai 2 and 6 and as well as verse 7. Because when the Lord comes back, as I'm going to say again, the powers that you see today will be shaken out of power. So we are in that time of the transitioning of power. Okay, now I want to go back and read um, Habakkuk chapter um, 2 again. So like, yeah, I might as well read it from here. So let's go up and read verse 7. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with the glory, save the Lord of hosts. Which we'll get into that later on. But the point is, is that what I want to finish off on is the fact that the Lord is coming back in this time, especially in this time, most definitely. It's not a matter of if or maybe, we're not sure. It's very well ensure that the Lord is on his way. <laughs> okay. To shake kingdoms up and to establish his kingdom with the saints, which we, which we are going to inherit. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, just a while back ago, the Pentagon and, and, and as well as um, other um, military forces got together in Congress. I could be wrong in saying what I just said, but um, the people that are, that are involved in the business of, you know, looking at, you know, aerial phenomenons and, um, you know, astrologers and stuff like that. And as well as the, even the military. Okay. Uh, space military, that is, I would say, have looked into these things, and, and what they found out is that these things possessed power which is far beyond this physical playing field. So, this is very well proof. This scripture here is very well proof, as well as it is today, because the powers that be. And as well as the military powers, especially when it regards to space and as well as the astrologers and, and all of that stuff. All of these individuals that are, are specialized in, um, you know, as to what's going on in the heavens. They know because they're seeing things in the sky. If we're able to see things from our own naked eye, then how much more those with this technology that they got, which, which costs hundreds of thousands of dollars that they've spent they know what's going on. And it kind of reminds me of the time when um, Herod the king was on the scene. Just around the time when Yahweh was born. And the king saw the star in the east. And he took that to mean something. And it was the meaning of that a Messiah was going to come to deliver the children of Israel. So the goal for, for Herod was to what? Kill all of the Hebrew babies, especially the male babies, because again, once again, he knew that someone was going to come out of the nation of Israel among the male babies that was going to grow and become the Messiah. And as well as fasting forward to this time, Esau knows very well that they're going to have to fight the Lord one day. They know this. They know this very well. And this is why they keep looking into the heavens and they keep doing more and more research on these phenomenons. Down here in the UK, we call it UAPs. In America, they call it UFOs. Because they know, as well as what we know, that the Lord is getting ready to come back to shake this world up. Again, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven, excuse me, of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with the power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption, draw of nigh. And as it is also written in the book of um, Revelations, that every eye shall see him. So it's going to be made absolutely clear of who's in the heavens. <laughs> when the Lord make his second return, it's going to be made absolutely clear that it's the, it's the heavenly father beginning to send his son. It's the heavenly father sending his son down to declare his power towards the people. And the people are going to have to realize that it is the most high. He may have disregarded all of this time. <laughs> all right. So now let's go back and read 
the book of uh, Haggai again. And we're going to go somewhere else with this. So once again it reads, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, save the Lord of hosts. And what house is he talking about? He's talking about the house of Israel, which David is going to be ruling in. And as well as it is, as it is written in the book of Haggai, the second chapter, it tells you that Zerubbabel will be a signet of the nation, showing you that Zerubbabel is King David. All right? As well as it reads, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, save the Lord of hosts. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, save the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, save the Lord of hosts. So our kingdom is going to be much more greater than Solomon's kingdom, just to put it to you that way. Just to simply put it that way, you know. And um, when it speaks on the silver and the gold being the Lord's, all of that is going to be given up to the Lord's house as further explained in the book of Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 verse thing is uh, verse 15, man. Or it could be 12. Let me see. It's actually verse 9. So this reads, Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy power, and unto the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I have had mercy on thee. So, yeah, these other nations are going to be paying tribute and giving the best of what they have in their land, whether it's the best kind of silver, the best kind of gold that they got. And this is what's going to be delivered unto the Lord's house, which is the nation of Israel. Or in this case, should I say the house of Israel, which is also known as Mount Zion. So this is what it means when it reads the silver is mine and the gold is mine, save the Lord of hosts. Okay, and the Lord's kingdom is going to be well beautified, as well as it is, it is also written that the meek will be beautified with salvation. So now, what I also want to do is read the book of Revelations. Twenty-two. Maybe it's 21. Let me go back a chapter. It's a lock, yeah. Uh, yeah, prior chapter. Yes, it's Revelations 21. And we're going to begin by reading this all the way down to, I believe, verse 15. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So after the change that we were going to receive in our bodies, we're going to come down in our glorious fashion. And it also reads, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the most high is with men, as well as it is also known as the tabernacle of David which is the tabernacle of the Most High, and we just say it that way as well. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. Uh, verse 4, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, and neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, said, Excuse me. And he said unto me, right, for these words are faithful and true. And that's Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh Shai makes a second return, he's going to make us new. And as well as the earth is going to be renewed through his might and through his power. 
uh, verse 6, and he said unto me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. And he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his power and he shall be my son. And this is why um, we always preach. Beginning with the, the heads and as well as the, uh, the elders on down. That we have to endure to the very end. And saying that we got to keep doing these videos. You got to do, do your sit downs. You got to go out in the highways and the byways. You got to continue to fast and pray. As frequently as you can. Right? Do all of these things as it, as it is written to make your calling and your election sure. So that we can inherit the kingdom. As it is written, once again, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his power and he shall be my son. So there you go. So now let's go all the way down because I want to um get to the new Jerusalem, how it's going to be made. Which is the point that I want to get into. So this is it right here. Revelation 21 verse 10. Once again. Uh, and he carried me away in his spirit. To a great and high mountain. And showed me that great city. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from the most high. Having the glory of the most high. And her lights was like unto a stone. Most precious even like a jasper stone. Clear as crystal. And he had a wall. Great and high. And had twelve gates. And at the gates twelve angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. As it is also written um, to the disciples, right? As Yahweh Shai told them, Yahweh Shai told them in the book of Matthew 19. And they inquired, if they give up everything that they have, what will they have thereafter? And Yahweh Shai told them, he that forsake of lands for my name's sake, forsake of uh, families, houses, shall receive a hundredfold. And shall sit upon uh, the twelve, uh, what is it, judging the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Alright. And on the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. And on the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, as I've just mentioned. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the walls thereof. And the city lie four square and the left is as large as the breadth. In other words, the width. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, and the length and the breadth of the height of it are all equal. Excuse me, are equal. And he measured the wall thereof and had 140 and four cubits according to the measure of a man that is of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, and the second sapphire, and the third of chalcedony, and the fourth an emerald. So that's all I'm going to read. So our kingdom is going to be fully beautified, man. It's going to be so beautiful that we, 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 we can't really comprehend it in our, in our physical carnal mind right now. So this is what the Lord is coming to set up. As it is written that it, the Lord is zealous to set up the kingdom. So prior before he sets up the kingdom, in a little while will he come and shake the nations apart to establish this beautiful, this beautiful kingdom. Okay. Let me see what we can get more so in, in the book of Haggai. Uh, two. Yeah, verse 9. And the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, save the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, save the Lord of hosts. Exactly. And I'm reading it to you in the book of Revelations. Uh, or I, I have read it to you in the book of Revelations 21, where it mentions on how the, the streets are going to be paved with gold and the foundations of and the walls are going to be made out of the same and different uh, gemstones and, and all and all of these different, you know, beautiful uh, resources, which is going to beautify our kingdom. All right. So our kingdom is going to surpass the kingdom of, of the uh, of the ancient world that Israel had, which was during the time of Solomon and as well as King David. And, and by the way, speaking of King David, King David is going to be resurrected. Back on his throne. 
You're going to have Yahweh Shah, you're going to have King David, and as well as 104, the rest of 144,000. And all of these are going to rule in complete righteousness. And the whole earth is going to bear witness to the righteousness of the saints. All right. And the earth is going to be on the repositive vibration. A life-driven vibration. 